Hi, this is Patty Robertson with PMI Virginia. Today I'm going to answer the question for you, how does PMI Virginia screen their applicants to ensure their landlords end up with great tenants? And that is such an important question. In fact, I think it's the most important question a landlord should ask a property manager when you are interviewing for uh, a property manager that you're going to hire. Screening is the is the backbone that determines whether or not a landlord is going to be successful. Our goal at PMI Virginia for all of our landlords is to have the longest run of uninterrupted rent payments possible. So we want strong tenants that are going to abide by their leases and are going to pay the rent and, and preferably who are going to stay a long time. So the way we do that is we have specific criteria defined. We use the same criteria for every property and we advertise that criteria right in our ads because we don't want to, we don't want our time wasted and we don't want the applicant's time wasted. So we want, we let them know what the criteria is right up front. And the criteria we use is we have two income criteria. We want gross income of three and a, of three times the rent or net take home income of two and a half times the rent. The one exception we have for this is section eight. We have a different income criteria for section eight applicants. Um, and then we have an occupancy uh, standard and our maximum number of total occupants is two times the number of bedrooms. In addition, we have a, uh, another requirement of no more than two unrelated adults. Um, and then we have a, some criminal criteria we can't, it is against the law, HUD housing standard, against fair housing to say no felonies within a certain number of years. We cannot discriminate against felons. We have to use criminal data in a way that makes sense. So our criminal data criteria is no crimes against property, no crimes against people, no drug distribution, and no drug manufacturing charges in the last five years. So those are the criteria we use. And then we do look at other criminal criteria to make sure it makes sense. So uh, we, we look at that and, and make a determination based on the situation. And then we also do an income verification. So we collect the last most recent two months of income and then we use a third-party validator uh, to validate that the income that the tenant says they have and that they provided us paper documentation for really exists so there's you wouldn't believe there's a tremendous amount of fraud right now I just saw a company recently that will give provide fake pay stubs totally fake for $8.95 $8.95. I've seen some that offer pay stubs and uh, verbal verification, employment verifications for $35, $40. Um, the number of fake applicants we're getting right now is at an all-time high. Uh, so it is really important that we ensure that the data we have is correct. We also require that everyone have a valid photo, it's government issued photo ID. So that could be a non-driver's ID, a driver's license, a military ID, a passport, any kind of a government issued photo ID so that we can make sure that the person who we are renting to is actually the person who applied. Um, so then we also pull credit. We don't have a particular credit score that we are requiring. In, in my opinion, if people had perfect credit, they would be buying a house, not renting a house. But what we do with credit is we are looking for any threats to income. So again, we want to make sure people's income is dependable and reliable so that they continue paying rent. And we're looking on their credit for threats against that income. So that would be um, a, a lot of accounts with past due charges, um, anything that we see that would be a threat to income. Uh, we also look for threats to income in the civil court records. So we do our, our, our automated screening that most companies do, but we also manually screen all of the local court records and any, we screen for any city that shows up on the applicant's credit report or on their application or on their ID. So we manually go in and dig into court records to look to see if there are any civil judgments that may cause a threat to income. We don't uh, accept any applicant that owes money to a, another landlord, and we can see that in the court records. We can see if they got a judgment and if that judgment is satisfied. If the judgment is satisfied, we, that's not a black mark against the tenant, especially if that judgment was paid voluntarily. So when we look at the judgment data, we can see if let's say they got a judgment in July of 2017. 
and it was marked satisfied in September of 2017. We can see that that applicant got in some trouble, but very quickly rectified it and got the landlord paid. As opposed to if we see that the judgment got paid only through garnishments over a course of four or five years, we know that that applicant didn't voluntarily pay that, that debt off, that, that uh, debtor was forced to pay by order of the court through a, a garnishment through their pay. So I see those as very differently. Everybody gets in trouble once in, you know, once in a while. It is how we respond to trouble when we get in it that defines our true character. And if someone has a landlord debt, but they paid it off voluntarily, I see that as a good sign. So we're looking for other, other than just landlord tenant, we have a couple other things we're looking for. There are certain companies that are sure to garnish wages. And those would be um, companies like credit cards, um, cities, utilities, um, cell phone companies, furniture rental companies, car loan companies. If we see judgments, especially sizable judgments in those amounts that are unsatisfied, then we know that that tenant is at, applicant is at risk of having their pay garnished, which means they, we have to look at their income qualifications very, very carefully. Um, so we put all of that together and we look at it to, to determine, is it likely? Because past behavior is the best predictor of future success. When, both when you're hiring and when you're placing tenants. So we're looking at all the data to determine if we accept this tenant based on their past data, is it likely that they are gonna be successful in complying with their lease? And so uh, we are very comprehensive in what we do. And I personally, as the, I'm the owner broker, I feel a very high sense of responsibility in the area of tenant screening. If we have a tenant fail, I take it as a personal failure. And we always, if we have a tenant we have to evict or get a judgment on, we always go back and look at the screening to see, could we have, is there anything that we missed? Could we have made a determination um, that this was gonna happen? So we take it very seriously um, and we want the absolute best tenants. Uh, honestly, it's better to have a property vacant than to have a bad tenant in it. So we do everything we can up front to ensure that we have the best possible tenant in every one of our properties. So I hope that's it, that answers your question um, and check out the rest of our videos and we look forward to renting your property real soon.